Perhaps you noticed on the northeastern limb, top left, had a little case of the wiggles. On Soho's C2 camera, we notice a CME coming from the area. It is thin, but with expanse and a fair amount of speed. It is indeed coming from a set of active regions on the north, just behind the limb. Stereo A has visibility here. We'll see this one cresting over the limb into view before the weekend is out. Folks, we had a very large rumble out in the Atlantic yesterday, 6.9 on the ridge. Luckily, far away from people and too small for a tsunami. But not far to the west, we saw an interesting event as a steam explosion in the mountains has residents worried about the seismic and volcanic activity there. The ridge that took the quake does run right into the region. Let's have an aesthetic piece here before getting to the peer-reviewed works, Enceladus in infrared. The redder the return, the more heat and geologic activity. It is also indicative of new ice on the surface. The bottom right panel of the South Pole shows the tiger stripes and the ice that fell back down from its water jets, and we also see some of those red signatures top left in the northern hemisphere. Folks, after doing this nearly a decade, it is amazing how triggering I still find words like glyphosate, genetically modified, geoengineering, all those avenues where science pretends to be God or release absurd amounts of poison into the world. Here, their unintended target is the strawberry, but just a reminder that the stuff is banned in many countries because of the carcinogenic relationship when reaching allegedly unintended human targets. See what I did there? Keeping up with what seems to be a change in basic science every week or so, five-phase stability of materials was considered impossible, but not anymore. In case you are wondering, much of this basic science must change stuff we've seen this year has not made it into the larger field. Actually, almost none of it. Of note, one of the closest magnetars has had its distance measured in a way that is not complete astronomical nonsense. Parallax. As we go around the sun, we technically get a slightly different viewing angle of different objects in space. Most stars and definitely other galaxies are too far away for this to work, but not this one at just over 8,000 light years away. This next story hit nature with a bit of a thud earlier this month. We've been going over the galactic halo science a lot this year, moving towards the position where this massive dark matter cloud isn't actually there. It's been baby steps mostly, but this one might count as more of a leap. They are running a cosmic simulation and basically stopping the clock and zooming and zooming and zooming and zooming and zooming. They are finding that the dark matter halos in their simulations are up to a thousand times smaller and less massive than before, with some of the smaller galaxies having halos that only rival the mass of Earth. You gotta be kidding me. We're talking about a galaxy here. That's nothing. It's a dusty plasma electromagnetic cosmos in reality, and the proof of that can be found in our Plasma Cosmology playlist. It's listed below the video. It's also on our channel homepage, which you can find by just clicking the name Suspicious Observers here on the watch page. Up next, we're going to round it out with a triple at the stellar level. The first is a look at what they are calling stellar winds of aging stars. While some are likely mere binary or exoplanet bent wind nebulas, some of these look a lot more like stellar outburst shells, especially the middle panel on the left. Looks like the polar blast. We'll see better versions of that polar structure blast momentarily here with the second stellar level paper. It's about two new classical nova events, which are 10 to 10,000 times bigger than the sun's expected micronova in general, and which repeat on thousands to millions of years timescales. The shape is modeled as the same polar curves blast with an equatorial outward component as well. These in particular were 10 to the 38 ergs, which is about 100 to 1,000 times bigger than the expected solar micronova. And by the way, the polar blast with equatorial expanding component is how the NCAR model shows it happening in our system, even if that's probably not what they were going for. And so we have come to one of the key claims about the micronova and key arguments from the mainstream. They say all recurrent nova need a binary, and that goes for type 1a supernova too. Problem is, while they have seen a few of the binaries at that supernova level, many of them have not been able to be identified, and they have yet to actually observe the second star at the smaller recurrent nova events. Now, we are indeed up at that supernova level, and we are definitively saying there is no other non-degenerate star, which is the entire paradigm of their trigger. They need it to accumulate material in the corona to block the vent, so to speak, energetic runaway, and shell release. Well, as we've been saying since reviewing the literature 18 months ago, there must be another way. 
and it truly could be any accumulation mechanism, whether that's encountering the material or having a glitch out in the solar wind. You know, the sun goes from this yellowish white to red to black. And then, of course, through the dust and gas, we will see once again that pale hue. But hell follows with it.